Yes, Carl. Hello. Hello, Rupert. Thanks for that meditation. Um, from a from a non dual perspective, Rupert, what would your thoughts be on on finding true purpose with your everyday action, the sort of intentions and actions that you carry out on a on a daily basis? So maybe I've been seen through the sort of illusions of acquisition and materialism, things like that. What what how how can we gain more of a a sense of true purpose with what we do on a practical level on a daily basis. Yes, yes. All that changes really, Carl, is that our activities in the world are no longer engaged in the service of the sense of separation and the anxieties and the fears and the neuroses that attend it, but rather our activities are an expression of the qualities, if, if we can call them qualities, that are inherent in our true nature, peace, joy, love, beauty, and so on. So all the faculties of our mind and body remain available to us, but they are now used in, in service of, of truth and love and beauty rather than in service of the sense of separation. So I, I suggest by by starting, if you, if you want to know the, the direction to go in, by, by starting with what you love. If you go in that direction, the activity that you engage in will be the means by which you bring your love out from the inside of you into the world. And that's what, that's what enthusiasm is. It is the means by which uh, the, the, the love or peace or joy that are felt on the inside of us are shared in our activities and relationships in the world. And one of the best ways, if not the best way I know to, to find out what that would look like for you as an individual would be to start with what do I really love and go in that direction. And I would encourage you, Carl, to do so in this approach. This is not a traditional path of renunciation, although we do, as I said in the meditation, we do, at least to begin with, turn our attention away from the content of experience, but only in order to recognize our being clearly. Once this clear recognition has taken place or as it is beginning to take place in us, in this approach, it is also necessary to turn around and go back out into the world towards objective experience and, and share this understanding in whatever, in whatever way that might look like for each of us. I'm thinking from a, from a sporting perspective, Rupa, I see so many people who begin to play a sport because they love it, get very good at that sport, and then gain lots of attention or success or whatever as a result of that. But then the, the focus on the success takes away the love and the true sense Absolutely. Of with, with, with the game. Yes, uh, the focus on the success, if they are lucky enough to be successful, um, and, and if not, or, or as well as, the, 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 the stress, the anxiety, the fear of failure that, that, that comes with um, sporting activity. Yes, and this for many people eclipses that initial joy. It's the same for, for um, artists sometimes. The initial impulse behind the work of an artist is usually joy or beauty or... or but... Um, particularly as they become successful, they start to get a reputation, everything that comes with that, that can, for many people, obscure the initial joy and pervert its expression. I had a very interesting... You're in the sports in some form, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Which, which sport? What, what do you coach? In golf. Golf. I had a, a very interesting um, conversation recently with uh, Johnny Wilkinson, 
the the England rugby player who's um, fits exactly the the profile you 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 describe. Extremely successful, but as uh, so um, such a perfectionist, and so so driven by perfection always, and and, and with all the the difficulties and stress that comes with performing sport at an elite level. And he's now um, starting a podcast to address exactly this issue with uh, young sports players. And in fact, you'll, uh, next year, the conversation will, will appear on his uh, new podcast channel. But it, but it discusses I I exactly this, this um, topic that, that you raised, that the, the level of fear, anxiety, uh, um, the problem of success in in sports and and how how the ego appropriates that initial impulse which is impersonal it comes from joy it comes from love it comes from enthusiasm but very quickly the ego appropriates it mm. but uh, carl as, as a as a golf coach um that's a, a wonderful um opportunity to share this understanding through the, the the coaching because golf is such a is such a precise sport there's so little room there's much less room there's much less margin of error than there is in in uh, soccer or even in 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 tennis it, it, so um it's almost impossible in fact i think it would be true i'd be interested to know what you think about this it, it, it's almost impossible to play golf at, at, a, at a high level if uh, the neuroses and the fears and the anxieties of the ego in, are interfering. That's precisely what prevents one playing at a high level. It, it's actually true of any sport, indeed of any activity. Absolutely. And, you, you know, you, to actually perform that precise physical movement when your value as a human being is on the line, dependent on where a golf ball goes, is incredibly yes. difficult place to be. Yes, but yes. I'm, I'm, I'm probably biased with the lens that I look through, Rupert, that there's probably no other sport where people's relationship of love turns into absolute hate at, it, some, at, at some point as a, result, as a result of the ego at, at some point gaining yes. strokes for yes. doing well. Yes, yes. Yes. And, and of course, also, um, the requirement for, usually when we have to be very pre precise, we tense up because, because the, the precision requires a focusing of attention. And so normally everything in us, both mentally and physically, tenses in order to focus in on the point, of course, to play golf well. It's very true of tennis as well. Uh, you have to be relaxed. You have to be totally relaxed. So, so this, that, that that's a... That in itself is a is a great sadhana. This this combination of precision and relaxation, what that requires of your attention and of your body. So yes, you you, you could you could pretty well convey this whole understanding through uh, golf coaching. Yeah. E even if, of course, you never you you would never mention this understanding directly. If that would not be a appropriate coaching golf but it's not necessary to you th through through um discussing with your with your students what is required of them mentally and physically in order to perform at an elite level you are teaching them how to act impersonally you are teaching them how to to lose the ego and of course, that's what all sports people long for. They long to be in the zone. That's what the zone is, the, 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 the place where you operate, where you feel the, the universe is operating through you. you. You feel it's not you as a person who is operating. And for a sports person, that, 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 is, that is the place everyone longs to be. Just, there's a, just, I'm conscious of taking up time, but there's a, there's a wonderful passage in the inner game of golf that was written in the 1970s by Tim Galway. And it, it sums up everything that you're talking about. And the, and the passage is simply utmost sincerity. And he describes the utmost sincerity is when you stop trying to be anything and the ego subsides and the joy of the game overtakes you. And, 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 yes. yeah, that is the, and that is a wonderful place to get back yes. to. 
Yes, yes. And in fact, I, I would, I would suggest that that um, it is that experience that the sports person is really aiming for. They're not really aiming to win. What they're really aiming for is to be divested of the ego. Mm. 